Today what we're doing is we're going to continue our remediation for the state test. If you have any questions, make sure you let me know because we don't want you to be left behind. All right, so today what we're doing is we're going to do an amalgam of objectives or, or a, a mixture of objectives. And what we're doing is we're going to, we're going to kind of try to mimic the state test. Okay? You remember what I told you we were going to do this? So we're going to do, basically what we're doing, we're doing a bunch of mixed objectives instead of doing one objective per day. Because like I said, it's crunch time. We'll have a lot of time to do a lot of things. All right? So let's look at for our baby. All right? Let's read this as a class. Who want to read this first? I'm going to do it. In 1912, we're first in Boyle, and Auntie Bookbuilder discovered a many trip is still bad for society today. The Voynich Manuscript, named after its discovery, is filled with indecipherable strip and cryptic illustrations, including unidentifiable plants and objects which may be astronomical. The language in which the manuscript was written bears no resemblance to any known language and is likely a cipher or code. Where did this manuscript originate? What information is contained in this mysterious writing? Who could have authored it? Some scientists have theorized that the answer to this last question is Roger Bacon, a man who lived in the 13th century. All right, now, what is the first thing we do when we're looking at these paragraphs? So, let's look at yeah, right We sum it up, okay? Yeah. Now, like I said, remember, I don't want you to write a big old, just, just a huge summary of the paragraph. Give me three or four words. No more than 10 to tell me what the paragraph is about. That's all you have to do, okay? Yes, ma'am. It's words and they want to know if you underline them too. Okay, if it's words that you don't understand, underline them. Let's see if we can understand them better. What are they? Undecipherable, indecipherable. Okay, where is that? Astronomical, the second sentence. Second sentence. Astronomical. Okay. Anything else? Cipher. 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 Yeah. It's cryptic. Cryptic. Yeah, that's cryptic. What is a manuscript? Manuscript. Yeah. No, she's. You want to talk about that? Who's around? Cipher or code, right there. Oh, likely a cipher or code. Cipher means code. So we don't need that one. Okay. So, indecipherable means that you cannot decipher. You can't. You can't break it down. Okay? Astronomical. Think about astronauts. Where astronauts go? To space. space. So it's, it's, it's hot in layman's terms. Let's, let's say it's hot. Okay? So if, if it's an astronomical price, if the gas price is astronomical, that means it's very hot. Okay? So think about it like that. Think about stuff that you've already heard of you, or you or you like actually read before. Okay? Now, what is the summary for this paragraph? What are they talking about? The bondage manuscript, which is which is in the Okay. And Roger Bacon. Okay, exactly. Okay. So it's about the, the, the bondage manuscript and Roger Bacon probably wrote it. That's what this first paragraph is about. Basically what the first paragraph does is it introduces what the what the entire what the rest of the paper is gonna talk about. Think about your own writing. Okay? When you write, the first paragraph does what? It introduces what you're going to be telling about. Okay? So, writing is, like I said, it's, it's a system. Okay? You follow a system. First paragraph is the introduction. Okay? The body is going to, is going to go into more detail about the introduction or whatever the introduction we're talking about. Okay? And then you know the conclusion is going to sum everything up. All right? So, Second paragraph, Roger Bacon was an English scholar and monk whom some believe to be the first modern scientist. Bacon was born to a wealthy family around A.D. 1214 in Somerset in southwest England. Over a century, over a century and a half before Bra uh, Brazenose College of Oxford University was officially founded, he studied with other scholars in Brazenose Hall in Oxford. Bacon joined the Brotherhood of St. Francis of Assisi and became a monk in order 
in order in the order in approximately AD 1256. Exactly. Biography. So what I may put. And your clue, your keywords is Roger Bacon Woods. Exactly. So what I might put is bio or bacon. And I know it's a bio bacon because it's telling me about his life. It's telling me what he did. Okay? Everybody know what approximately means? Yeah. It means exact. Yes. Right. Good job. Yeah. Right. See, and that's what I want you to do. I want you to identify some of these words you already know. You've heard these words before, so identify them with stuff that you've heard. Maybe even stuff that you've heard on TV. Okay? All right. Next paragraph. Somebody read the third report. Okay. about this paragraph, you already know where it is. Yeah. 
Okay? And this is the purpose of this, and that's why I keep telling y'all, don't get lazy, don't get lazy, don't get lazy, because it's going to help you. I guarantee it. All right? Next one. As a teacher, Roger Bacon, both amazed and terrified his students when he passed a ray of sunlight through an intricate um, arrangement of worms, blades, bees, producing a visual rainbow in his classroom. He insisted on applying a, mo a modern scientific method and demanded that his students precisely record the minute is details of their scientific observations. Bacon's adherence to his own scientific standards marked a great point of prominent traditions of the time. Aren't they like goals or something like that? Is it goals? What do you mean? Because he said, um, he created uh, something. Yeah. He created he, something. He, he, he passed a very of some, no, he insisted on applying a modern scientific method in the manner that he stood precisely for the minimum Minutest. You know what minutest is? Small. Small. Okay? If you hear somebody say minute, they mean very small. So small, he wanted like. He wanted them to, to write down the smallest details of what he did. Okay? So maybe his accomplishments. Maybe his goals. I see. Okay? Yeah. 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 Okay? So maybe his accomplishments. Maybe his goals. I say goals. Okay? Maybe his goals. What did he set goals for himself? Or did he accomplish things? Here. Well, he said he assisted. He insisted on applying. Okay. Okay. So let's put goals slash accomplishments. Let's do that. Let's put all. Yes, that's what one. That's the last. Put goals slash goals slash accomplishments. Okay. Pretty easy, right? Mm -hmm. And you see, it's not taking us long to get through these paragraphs. Okay. That's why I keep telling you. You go in there, stay awake, and just read through. You won't have a problem. Last paragraph, so I'm going to get that one Could Bacon's ideas be from this society views any of his contemporaries were highly skeptical of his experiments, his inventions, and his theories about the natural world? Still, his steep, his steep pays, steadfast, steadfast insistence upon the necessity for clearly defined rules of experimentation. Experimentation. Experimentation is the main. Is the main simple and direct explanation of naturally observed phenomena. Phenomena? Phenomena. In this proper characterization of mm -hmm. the we discover text relating Aristotle's, Aristotle's. Aristotle's theories of physics and the natural world help establish the empirical rules under which modern science functions. Man, that's a mouthful. It was different. It was different. Okay? What's the summary for this stuff? What happened in this paragraph? Remember the five W's? Okay. Who, what, when, where, and why? Okay. Who was skeptical? Other scientists were skeptical. Were skeptical, but what? They still like use his stuff. Exactly. So I might put scientists were skeptical, but his his presence is still felt. Something like that. Yeah, they remember. He's remember. Okay? All right. Easy, right? See how quickly we went through the past? They were skeptical of his of his beliefs or of his theories. Hey, we got some more. Yep, one more in the back. Oh, two more pairs. Skeptical. Oh, this one easy. You can let the first Okay. All right. Next one.
Mayor Brillis. Mayor Brillis. What is this about? Outstanding job. Okay, basically his work, what he did. Okay, how great he was. Okay, remember that last sentence? It's always going to sum up everything that's in the whole paragraph. Okay, so if you ever get confused about the summary, then I want you to read everything between the first and the last sentence. But if you ever get confused about the summary, look at the first and last sentence again because they're going to tell you what is it about. Say it again. Well, they're not, they're not from the thesis in all of them, but they summed it up. Okay, because you're gonna always sum up a paragraph before you move on to the next one. Okay, last paragraph, very quick. Was Roger Bacon the author of the most mysterious manuscript in the world? Current results are not conclusive, but if he did end up writing this manuscript, the contents of the book suggest that he had access to scientific inventions previously believed to be to have been created centuries later. Who knows what amazing information from the study of this mysterious book may uncover? What's it about? Is he the author? And if he did, then he was. Right. So I asked him, is he the author of this mysterious manuscript? And if he was, he's extremely intelligent. All right? If it's true or not. Right. See how easy that is? See how easily we went through? And then you can look at that, yeah, like you said, that last sentence said, who knows what amazing. Exactly. All right, now, poetry. You just gotta read that at least three or four times. Now, exactly, good job. We want to read poetry at least three or four times to get the whole understanding, okay? Unfortunately, we don't have time to read it three or four times in class, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna read it, and I'm gonna help you out, figure out, I'm gonna help you figure the meaning out. All right? And, and we, but how do we read poetry? How do we read poetry? Stand. Is it stand? Line by line. 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 Is it line by line? line. Or do you read it till you get the punctuation? To the, uh, Punch to the punctuation. You read it till you get the punctuation. Remember, when you read poetry, it's just like reading a paragraph. They sentences. Okay? They're, they're sentences. So read till you get the punctuation. Because if you start reading line by line, you get confused. Okay? Now, fortunately, this is already broken down into stanzas, so we can just summarize each stanza as we as we go along. Okay? All right. First stanza. Somebody get this report. The memories we have for those who came before First of all, I'm sorry. Let's look at let's look at the title. The title. Make an inference. Okay. Kishan, what is the legacy? Like, uh, I mean, it's like something you can hold on to real Okay. Something that you can hold on to. Is it always is it always something tangible? Something that you can put your hands on? No. Okay. So a legacy is is maybe a memory. Or like Keyshawn said, maybe something that somebody left behind that you can always remember them by. Okay? So, first thing I want you to do whenever you read poetry, look at the title. Okay? Make an inference about the title. Because a lot of times, when you take the state test, the title is going to have a lot to do with the whole entire poem. Okay? As opposed to if you were in college, sometimes the title may be all off the wall somewhere else. And you're looking at the poem like, I don't know how the title of the poem match. That's like song. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah. Makes no sense, does it? Alright, so first stanza, what are they talking about? Memories. Memories. Okay, what about memories? Okay. Okay. Give me a general, because remember, on the summary, when we when we make the summary something, we don't want any details. So give me a general summary of this first stanza. Memories bring happiness. Maybe not memories bring happiness, but about memories make. I think it made like uh, <gasps> something behind. We all leave memories. We all leave memories, good or bad. Somebody, I heard somebody say good or bad. I said that. Yeah, we all leave memories. Okay, so we know 
that this thing is about memories. Okay, y'all cold? Yes. All right. So I get the second paragraph for you. Second sentence. The known, the unknown, both are one to those who are not strong. In everyone that, in everyone they resonate. The resonate. Resonate. They valiant and the the valiant and the frail. The memories of those long gone from the field leave legacies to cherish or deplore. But all of us leave memories to those who come here. All right. What's this one about? I think it means everyone leaves a memory. No, like people who died. Yeah, and what they leave behind. And what they leave behind? Okay. What they leave behind. I think it's the same as the first paragraph. It's pretty much the same as the first one. Pretty much the same as the first one. Right. So, and notice at the end, right here at, at, at the uh, last the last uh, line of the stanza, all of us leave memories for those who come hereafter. Well, look at that one so on top. Okay. Everybody leave 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 Everybody gonna leave behind memories. Right. So basically they said everybody gonna leave behind memories. For the one that come out. Right. Here in this stanza, they saying the known, the unknown, both are one, are, are one to those who are not strong. Okay? So if if they know who leave the memory, or if they don't know, you still gonna leave the memory. Okay? Y'all follow? It said right there, leave these to chairs or Exactly. Chairs on the floor. Right. Right. Okay? Third stanza. Small or big. Okay? Like the first one. Okay? No matter. Whoever you are, you leave a memory. Okay? So now we kind of get the feel of what this poem will be about or what is what it's about because we've got three stanzas and they pretty much talk about the same thing. Except they just describe different types of memories. Okay? You said four? Four? Yeah, four Okay, go ahead. It's up to us to choose what it is we want to know. Up to us to make our progress swift or slow. To leave behind more haunted dreams. Images that glow. Leave uncertain things or melancholy. Melancholy. I believe still. I will leave here to love who come here after. What is this one saying? What is uh, melancholy? Melancholy is, is, is like, is, if you want it's almost a sadness. Okay? Like if you want to remember or I don't know. It's our choice. It's yeah, it's, it's your choice if you want to remember or not. Right. It's your it's your choice. It's your choice. What type of memories or what you want people to remember you for? Yeah. Okay? If you want people to remember you for being a bank robber, that's your bank choice. Okay? If if you want people to remember you for selling drugs, that's your choice. Okay. Or if you want people to remember you for doing good things. Okay? Okay? So, same thing. Yes, all of us leave memories to those who come hereafter. Okay? Next one. Last one. So, let us make a plan. Yes, let us. You and I. Swear on this goodness to remain when out we fight. Since all of we choose what we leave, leave genial dreams. Genial. Genial dreams of fanciful, creative things that steer the mind to wonder. For all of us, leave memories to those who come hereafter. What's this? Memories? They're saying, um, try, try to leave only good memories. Exactly. Try to leave only good memories. Matt, let me ask you this question. What does the word genial mean? Let me have it. What's the dream? Accomplished dream. Not, not accomplished, Wish. not so much sweet. Wish. Pleasure, pleasurable, or, or pleasant is the word I'm looking for. Pleasant. Yeah. Um, genial means to be pleasant. So they want. He's saying, let's make let's make a pact. Let's say that we're gonna leave pleasant dreams for people who come after us. Y'all got it? Oh, yeah. Easy. You see how we just went through a whole story and a whole poem 
and it didn't take too much out of us. Okay? 20 minutes. And when you're doing it by yourself, it won't take that long. Okay? Easy, right? Y'all got this. All right, we're going to use the clickers. Everybody go ahead and do number 10. I'm going to tell you what objective this is so you mark it on your sheet. Yes. Because remember I told you that sometimes they're going to give you a poem and a story put together. Well, what they're going to do is they're going to they give you the excerpts. Okay? But then a lot of times you need a holistic view of the whole passage in order to get the question right. Okay? So the choice is do I take the chance and just look at the excerpts or do I read the whole thing to be safe? Remember, this is your graduation. All right? So go ahead and do number 10. I'm going to give you six minutes. Full no time? Six minutes. Well, we've already read this, so this shouldn't be too difficult. Okay? So six minutes. I'm going to set the timer. I'm going to give you the objective, but I'll tell you when the timer will What's that, Dominique? What's it? All right, so this is what we thought. A lot of people thought A, people thought B, but just as many thought C as A, all right? So we see where we are. Nobody thought D. Obviously, D was completely wrong, right? All right, so let's look at the question. So the question says, based upon the two excerpts, which option below accurately and appropriately presents a summary of findings for research purposes? Keywords. Oh, summary. Summary. Accurately and appropriately. Accurately and appropriately. What else? Research. Research purposes. It's one more thing. Findings. Not findings. Uh, two. two excerpts. Now, we got two excerpts, what are we doing? Combine, combine. We combine them. Okay? Good job. Remember, two excerpts, one answer choice. What's the testing term for? Well, testing term for combine. Conjunction. Not, not conjunction, not summarize. It starts with an S. Synthesize. synthesize. So you're going to synthesize these two to get one answer. Okay? Right. Exactly. All right. So. Who wanna come do this? One? Don't be scared. I don't know if I'm wrong, try. Exactly. They don't even talk about the other people in the paragraphs. 
Okay? So it's too much information because we want a summary and we can't summarize anything that's not there. That's why J wrong. They have too much information on Yeah, too much so information on optics. Right, because we know that both paragraphs are not just about optics. And that's what we're looking at. Okay? So go ahead and cross J out. Okay? Yeah, I take my answer You take it back? Yeah, it's going to be C. Yeah. It's going to be C? Yeah. H? Yeah. Why? Because um, in, in this one, it's talking about everybody, like, could they have Rob Bacon, the W, and Robert George, George T. Uh -huh. you know? And then we're going to make those here to the arrow. Arrow. Oh. Hit it, hit it again. Shut up, Larry. If you go, God, dog. If you go back, this video. If you go back over here, it's 10 will Roger back to the Okay. All the right there is out. Okay. And then back like the, I said. Uh, the, the arrows, the scroll arrows. Damn, 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 damn. Right there. There you go. And like I said, in SR2, it's like, what the? <laughs> <laughs> it's <all right>. <laughs> <laughs> So what you did was, the only thing you did was you synthesized both of them, and you picked out the main ideas of paragraph one, paragraph two, and you synthesized them to get the correct answer. Yep. Yeah. That's all you gotta do. You're yeah, exactly think right. about it. Yeah, think about it. Yeah. Like I said, always go back and prove your answers. Always. Jacaby, which, which one did you end up going with? Huh? Which one did you end up going with? I had B. Yeah, B? Okay. Do you see why it's not B? Okay. Does everybody see? Somebody go over and explain to me why it's not B. What's wrong with B? Anybody? Um, you can do it if you want to since you're up there. B is talking about the first paragraph. B is only talking about the first one. What about A? A is. I don't know. It's only talking about the C. Exactly. Good job. Alright. So, um, L, L, L and D is talking about the second one. Oh, and D is talking about the second one. I chose Why? I was on. I changed my answer. I was just. I read both. I was thinking about the second one because when I had saw these, it said dates from around 50 CD. Right. Now, like I said, remember, you got two paragraphs. Synthesize them to one answer. If, if, the, if the answer choice is only talking about the second, it's wrong. If it's only talking about the first, it's wrong. It has to talk about both of them in order to be right. 
And the way you know that is that you're going up and you're proving and you're underlining and you're drawing lines and you're doing all of that. Okay? Because y'all know Ms. Cavill has to draw lines. Okay? Objective 2G. So look on your tracking sheet. If you got it right, put a circle or a happy face or whatever. If you got it wrong, put an X. 2G. 2 yeah, if you put it, if you, sad face, you know, whatever you want to do, it's 2G. So if you got it wrong, when you come to after school tutorials, you know exactly what you need to work on. Yeah. All right, number 11, okay? Let's, let's kind of do this together. Number 11 was easy. Okay. Which? statement below justifies the decision to include or not to include the information in the timeline. All right? Keywords. Don't you have to justifies. Justifies. Include, not include. Include. The decision. Not include. Decision. Information. And information in the timeline. All these things should be circled on your paper or underlined or highlighted. Whatever you're going to do. So now when we look at the question, when we look at the timeline, we know exactly what we're looking for. Okay? This is objective 2A. 2A as an apple. Okay? Yeah. I'll say you. Uh, I'll say you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't say it. Don't say it. Don't say it. You're going to put, put it in the eggs. 2A. 2A. We're going to put it in the eggs. We're going to see how many people got it right. Go ahead and put me. Yeah, look you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to time Is somebody else beside her? Five. What? Five. You put your hands in the ball? Everybody else got B and C. Okay? Let's look and see where we are. I was confused between B and C. You're confused between B and C. Alright? Well, let's look at this. I need, I need one person to read each one of these, and then I'll explain. The main strips first. 
Georges, the Pharisees, perceives the manuscript after the death of Emperor Rudolf II. 1662, Barsius dies and leaves the manuscript to his friend, Jane Marie Marcy, a physician and professor. 1666, Marcy sends the manuscript to the scholar Anthony Kirscher. 
is the author, what's the author's purpose in the timeline? Um, in the in the passage. So, talk so, about how Frankie was a man. So what what is he doing? It's, it's essentially what is he doing? So what does the biography do? It explain. Not explain. Inform. Yeah. So the author's purpose in the passage is to inform. Now if you look here, what's the author's purpose? That's what I said. It didn't answer nobody about the author's purpose. But it doesn't have to. They asking. They just ask you what the purpose is of the timeline. So why do you think the author put the timeline here? To break it down. To break it down. Break it down. Importance in the most important information. So to do what? You want to write track. You say the right thing. To clarify. Not to clarify, but to explain. Explain. So it's so, important. So the answer is C. Hey. Okay. It's C. I'm not even going to argue. I'm not going to argue. If you got a question, let me know. I'm not going to argue with it, though. You got a question? No, 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 but you on the right track is what I'm saying. Okay. Two A. Two A. Put it in the first word. Make sure you put it in the first word because we'll we'll go over many many of them. All right. I think we have time for maybe. No, we don't. No, we don't have time. All right. This is what we're gonna do. I'm going to give you some homework. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited that you're excited about homework. Ooh, I hope you had to fix that. I actually want you to do Ooh, the homework. Yeah. I know. So I'm asking oh. so much. So okay, much. So, but so I want you to, what I want you to do, what I want you to do is I want you to go home. I want you to complete this. Do the same thing we did in class. Because if you can do it, yeah, I'm going to tell you about this in a second. If you can do it in class, then you can do it by yourself. Okay? I want you to finish this. I'm going to give you a grammar sheet. Okay? So you can do one of two things. If you can come to tutorials and we can finish it together in tutorials, or we can work it next time in class. Now, if you come to tutorials, that means you'll be ahead of the class now and you'll be able to move on. Today or tomorrow. Okay? Bring, bring your objective sheets. No, I'm I'm having a tutor today. Today's Thursday. Today, Saturday, 9 to 12. Okay.